It's just a conversation. So my name is Lori Power. I'm a group benefit consultant. My idea of being consistent to my clients is to always bring in those in the know. Rod has been such a great friend to me over the last couple of years, most especially this last year in providing me with information I need to better service my clientele. So I'm always pleased to have Rod come in and talk about mental health and telemedicine and how we can do things better. Rod, for those that might not know you, can you provide a bit of a, a brief history on how you came to be in the LifeWorks and with Morneau Chappelle? Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much, Laurie. And, and, you know, I love working with you. A um, little bit of a love fest. You know, I, I work with a lot of brokers across uh, Western Canada, but Laurie is very unique. She's very customer centric and is always looking for the latest either technology solution package to bring to group clients. So it's, it's, it's always a pleasure to work with her. Uh, just real, real quick backstory for me. I've been involved in well-being for a really long time. Many, many years ago, I used to run international fitness clubs. I took a little divergent. I became a telecom executive for quite a long time, for almost 17 years. And I burnt myself out so badly that I uh, really sacrificed my mental health, my physical health. I had to take a year off. And, and through that, I had to rebuild myself. So when I did, I realized that I wanted to work with corporations and improve mental health overall and balance. So I started working with LifeWorks. LifeWorks was bought a couple of years ago by Morneau Chappelle. And, and very soon, in a few weeks, we'll be changing the whole name to LifeWorks. But... I love what we do. So we basically are the largest provider of employee assistance program services around the world. We have about 37 million people a day use our, our programs. And most recently, we brought in our telemedicine solution because of the trends. And we'll talk a bit more about that in a few minutes. But, um, you know, I'm just a well-being guy. At, at the end of the day, because I've seen a lot of damage, I'm living proof of it. And if we can help other people, help organizations, help managers, employees, that's that's what gets me up in the morning. I love that part. And Lori's a big champion of that. So so again, thanks for letting me be well, here. Again, it's it's my pleasure to have you. I think the reality is all of us, you know, we we are impacted. No matter how strong mentally we thought we were in those ancient times of 2019 and before, uh, you know, it's really brought to light. I I know even this last week, having an ability to call when I need it that isn't a family member because we're, we're all in this bubble now is, is an astounding way to be able to cope because sometimes we just can't cope. And I said about those rocks, right? Rock, paper, scissors, but sometimes we're just carrying those on our shoulders and it is really difficult to, to put those down sometimes and having it access like you do to LifeWorks provides that way out for lack of better words. Let's start first by looking at mental health over a year in. What are we seeing trend-wise happening? We can all speak anecdotally about how it's impacting us, but tell me what the trends are coming through from the, from the actual um, science of it. Yeah, absolutely. So, so folks, we, 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 we are a true research organization. We have a full department and we have a head of research and development that looks at trends and data. So we do studies of thousands and thousands of, of folks in a number of countries. We'll focus more on Canada, of course, today. But what that information helps us understand is what's really going on under the covers for Canadians. How is, how is their mental health impacted? Is there physical health issues as well? And then when we take that data, we have a better understanding of how to provide solutions. So Morneau Chappelle has, has created something called the Mental Health Index. We've been doing it for a number of years now. And basically we take a look at uh, over 3,000 Canadians and we run them through a whole bunch of survey questions to find out how things are going. We usually do it once a year, but when the pandemic started a year ago, we decided to do the Mental Health Index every month. So taking pre-pandemic uh, numbers, so from one to 100, so one is, is poor and 100 is perfect, that's a health score that we, we're looking at. So generally Canadians up till the end of uh, 2019, early 2020, we we're sitting very consistent around 75 was the number, which is pretty good. We wanna see it a little higher, but 75 is good. It's very solid. And then once the pandemic hit, we dropped considerably lower. So we dropped well over 10 percentage points. When you're looking at data of thousands and thousands of people, that is a massive, massive drop. And, and so we've been monitoring it month over month over month. 
And some of the things that we're seeing, and to Lori's point, I mean, you know, we're we're in in the in the country, we're seeing people, we're involved with their families and friends and employees and workers. The big things we're seeing are isolationism is a real problem. So the social health component, which which Life Force really works on, is is really key. Financial uncertainty is a really big one right now as well. But there's a couple of other things that concern me most because you know, looking from sort of a, a macro view. There's a couple of things that we've got to keep a close eye on. So if the folks on the call here are looking at benefits and supporting organizations. So there's a couple of trends. One is people are not getting the help they were getting before the pandemic, whether it's on mental or physical, they're not getting the help that they should be getting. Some people had developed new challenges. So more mental health issues or maybe physical issues. Maybe they're not exercising like they used to or maybe they've got anxiety that has just really started to come through through the pandemic. They're not getting the help as well. And we're tracking that number at almost 40%. So these are people that either have developed an issue or had an issue before the pandemic. They're not getting their help, the help that they should be doing, whether it's rehab, whether it's talking to a clinical counselor, uh, whatever that is. So what happens now is you've got a bit of a ticking time bomb because these are people that are progressively getting worse, not getting the help that they need. So that's where we start bringing in some, some additional layers on top of the employee assistance program. When, when we look at why are people not getting the mental health that they need or the physical health, so a few things come up. Availability, access, the ability to travel. You know, Claudia was talking about some of the challenges where you go in and you can't actually you know, my, my, I have a family doctor. It took me two years to fi find a family doctor. I had uh, my ex-wife needed to go to the to our family doctor with my daughter. She go. I make an appointment. It takes a week and a half to get in there. She goes in, and then the doctor won't see her. Tells her she has to go back home, call in to have a discussion, and then we'll see about doing a, a physical appointment. My ex-wife is upset. My daughter's not getting the help she needs. It's that is not how we. That's how we. That's not how we support our, our folks. It's not how we do it. So, by having telemedicine, and this is what I did. So I set up telemedicine recently. I needed some help, and I'm busy work. I've got young kids. Uh, so so basically, what I did is I needed to connect with our nurse practitioner. So I logged in through the LifeWorks app. I booked an appointment in less than 24 hours. I was able to get connected. I could have did it immediately if I wanted to, but I was, I was quite busy. I only had like two minutes. Went in, set up the appointment. The next day, I did a video call with a nurse practitioner. We, we spent 20 minutes on the phone. She went through all the things that I needed to talk about. And before we hung up together, she had actually done the prescription, sent it to the Shoppers Drug Mart 10 minutes from my house and had it all completed. Lowered my stress. I could get back to work. I couldn't take a couple hours off to go down to have a doctor tell me they can't see me. And it, it was just a completely different experience. And it felt so good. And she was fantastic too. The nurse practitioners we use, so you have a, a regular nurse, registered nurse. So nurse practitioners have two extra years of clinical training. And this nurse that I had was actually, a, she had a doctorate in nursing. So we've got tremendous folks in our network. So in terms of availability, it's much safer. The way that we're consuming certain certain services, specifically healthcare, has changed now. So that's why we brought in telemedicine because now we have that medical extension to the mental, physical, social, financial health that we have with the AP. So I know that was a mouthful, but I'm excited about it. I, I love the fact that we're bring, we brought this in and it's really helping companies now. I couldn't agree more. Access and timing is everything because what is it when we have we have the kids at home and we don't know what to do we have nowhere to go even just having that that initial phone call how does it integrate for payments how does it integrate for for cost wise for the user so if, if an individual wanted to book in virtual care on their own they're looking at about 35 to 40 dollars for that that individual session so what we've done is with our program is you would pay a small amount additional per month. And like right now it's it's less than $4. It's about $350 per employee per month to add it in. And what that gives the employee is unlimited telemedicine access, 24 hours a day. Some of the programs out there could be a bit cheaper. Some of them come in, you know, maybe a couple of dollars, a buck or two. But usually what they do is it's very limited. They'll only it'll take you, they'll say you can access within 48 hours. 
with us, you could access within 15 minutes. Like if you need to talk to a nurse now, you can get access immediately, 24 hours a day. It's unlimited, but it also gives your family members unlimited too. Lori, you just hit a key point. Families specifically are the ones struggling with time management, safety issues, anxiety, managing calendars, all that supported by having the, the live virtual telemedicine. So those are some of the some of the components that really can support it. And uh, it, overall, it's 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 just a, it's it's a much more efficient way of doing it. So for billing, it's on your LifeWorks bill. Uh, so if you've got EAP today or you want to add it, um, like yesterday, I'm, I'm working with a couple of uh, fairly large mills in some of the nor northern regions of Alberta and BC. And uh, th so they're bringing in our EAP program. They've added in telemedicine because some of the users are driving three hours to get to a medical clinic and they've got to take a half a day off work. But I've also got companies too in, in, in urban areas where it's, it's about anxiety and safety. The, they don't want their executives and leaders, the, the managers or the employees going into clinics because now you're opening yourself up to infection again. So, so it's on the same bill as your LifeWorks bill. Inside the LifeWorks EAP platform, there's actually a big telemedicine button. You just click it, it puts you into the intake page. You set up a profile that has all your medical information there as well. And the calendar's there and there's a big button, get help now, where you can connect directly to a nurse practitioner if you need to. So those are some of the pieces around how to connect and how the billing works. I'm thinking that big button would be red with an alarm on it sometimes. <laughs> Just to hit it. Everything always comes down, Rod, and everybody in this room knows, so I'm preaching to the choir, but everything comes down to communication. Getting yep. that communication down from, from the top lines, if you would, the management, the team leads, down to the employees. Because it's one thing to say you have it. It's quite another to, one, show them how to use it and, and to get them on board for using that. What are best practices that you're finding in that rollout? And, and here's the interesting thing is when you have EAP, you have a certain level of activity or engagement. And then with telemedicine, as standalone, you have a certain amount of activity and engagement. But when you put them together, one plus one is three, you actually get much more activity on both sides. And the great thing about having it together is it's a single communication strategy. So you're not educating on different numbers and different access points. They're going into the same website. They're going into the same mobile app. So that ease of communication is there. But we have lots of materials that you can send out to the employees and the way we, we've got some advanced technology that allows us, so a key contact can press a button and then a message goes out to all the users inviting them into the telemedicine profile and the platform. And also there's a dynamic news feed in the, the website and the mobile app that key contacts could put a message in there about telemedicine and some of the benefits. And don't forget we have access to this and maybe some other things too, like perhaps they want to want to promote some certain activities within the LifeWorks platform. So we work with with the key contacts. We have communication materials, whether they need things that could be printed, things that be attached to emails, or again, push pressing that button to send an email out to inviting everyone to, to log in to set up their telemedicine profile. We've got some best practices around that that we can share and they work really, really well. But again, both drive more activity and it's one point of contact, one umbrella that supports all of it. I was talking yesterday and leaders are typically very charismatic. They don't have a problem talking to people or leading people. But when it comes to workplace mental health, the sanity and security, if you would, of, of your best asset, your, your people, there are a lot of other nuances that come into that, whether you are perceived to be discriminating, um, whether you're in line with employment standards. Take me through a couple of the programs, and we're going to go to that the EAP part of things, where we you do offer programs specifically for the leaders, for the management team, to help them with that communication, because we may see an employee who is in need. It's, it's clear as day, but we're working with different personalities and the approach has to be appropriate. Take me through a little bit about that, that team support that you put in place. 
Absolutely. So, so multi-pronged approach, and it, and it depends on the individual. Some people, they like to read, to, to learn, or maybe they like to watch videos or audio files. So managers can go into the research section, the resource section of the LifeWorks site and app, and they can pull that content out. Uh, there's also uh, toolkits. So some of the popular toolkits, there's a manager's toolkit, there's a COVID-19 support toolkit, um, health and well-being toolkit. So managers can pull those toolkits, which essentially is a whole bunch of resources pulled together in a nice tight package. One of my favorite things though, is the management consultations. So in these challenging times with managers, it's difficult to be a manager the best of time, but right now with COVID, they're taking care of safety protocols. They're taking care of engagement issues. Maybe you know they're, they're not used to using Zoom or Teams. They can actually call into our hotline or 24 seven hotline and say, hey, I'm a manager for XYZ company and I've got a meeting coming up and I've, I've got some issues around engagement. Or you know, I, I think there's some harassment going on in my team and I don't know how to handle that. Or maybe there's someone that's been a, a really great performer and I think there might be an addic addiction issue that I don't know how to, how to have a discussion around. How do I address that? If they call our management consultation group, they're talking to a, a group of experts that has specialized training in trauma, and they'll go through strategies and give them guidance as well. So it's really a multi-pronged approach, lots of great information online, but we, we love the actual people content where they can call us and speak to us too, so that manager consultations is really well used right now and it's very popular. Let's not leave without talking about the webinars, the access to ongoing education when it when it comes to putting and again i don't see i don't see benefit plans in general as being a, a set it and leave it kind of program is very dynamic but most especially on the employee assistance program on the telemedicine it is incredibly dynamic and a, a, the ability to make it very unique per organization i think is that customization that sets more no chapelle and life works apart I really like the the uh, library, if you would, mm -hmm. of access to information as it applies to them. Take us through a little bit about that. So in terms of content, we have a full team that just builds massive amounts of content. We, and we're starting to shift a little bit. So we do surveys of every single person that comes through LifeWorks to ask them, how was the experience? What can we do better? A lot of people are saying, we want more video clips, so small video clips, so what we call micro learning. So if, if anyone's on LifeWorks, maybe go in later today and you'll see we've got a beautiful series on communication right now. Because, you know, Laura, you've mentioned a couple of times, and this is one of the things you're very good at, communication is everything. Is it, you know, your relationship at home with your spouse, with your children, with your workers. You know, I, I, I'm lucky enough to have a fantastic manager on the call. Graham is actually my manager. And probably Graham's greatest strength is his ability to communicate. So in our site and, and our uh, mobile app, we've got a tremendous amount on communication that you can actually you know, use to support yourself as well as your folks at, at, uh, at work and at home. So yeah, th there's lots of great, literally thousands of tools that you as a facilitator can pull out and share or use for yourself. There's lots and lots of content that you have access to. I'm gonna put it out to the room and say, when you're talking about employee assistance programs to perhaps your client base, perhaps your organization, what's the general feedback? What what are you hearing from your, your owners, your employers, your employees? Is the, is the feedback, yeah, we'd like it, but what, what do you hear when you're talking about EAP? Fortunately, a lot to add just because of the the nature of my business being expatriate and more kind of special risk and, and oddball stuff, I don't really get into the nitty gritty of, of kind of your standard employee benefits program. I mean, a lot of the international clients that we do have, they do have EAPs, um, but we've always found that the expat community tends to be more uh, along the lines of, of type A personalities that are, that are go, go, go and work at all costs, which is probably not a good thing long term, uh, but certainly from, from the point of time that I'm getting them and seeing them, there's not a lot of utilization for um, expats. The, uh, the main concern and the main driver of our business, obviously, is, is medical uh, and evacuation and, and repatriation. Uh, those, are, those are the big items that, that we concentrate on so EAP is 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 there its utilization among that that kind of 
uh, population is, is generally been pretty small over that I've seen over the past 15, 20 years. Bill, I don't, I don't know if you if you know this, but we actually have an advanced, uh, it, it is a form of VAP, but it's an advanced program for expats as well. So um, we work, because we're global, we've got lots of organizations and you're exactly right. They have very specific needs and it's different. So we don't, so the way our expat, just really quickly, I'll, I'll just spend 20 seconds on it. We, we have the ability to have a white glove concierge approach where we will reach out to them because Phil, you're exactly right. They're type A personalities. Generally, they're not going to call in. So we actually call them to touch touch base with them. You know, so we would call and say, you know, Melissa, we know that, you know, you, you just landed in London, England from Canada. We want to make sure everything is, is going okay. We'll call it before you leave even. Is the family okay? Does anyone need to have a discussion? Do you need help with any checklist? That sort of thing. So we have a really nice white glove approach. So if you need more information, let Lori know and we can put something together and for actually, you. Actually, Rodney, we have, we have a, and I, I have worked with you quite a bit, not you personally, but. but oh, good. Uh, oh, uh, fantastic. With a, a more of a white label type uh, product for our expats. Beautiful. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's there, and uh, but appreciate the additional information. Um, sure. But yeah, yeah so, so from my perspective, it's, it's not one of those items that seems to be high on my client's priority list in terms of, of what to do with it and, and how to use it and, and so on and so forth. I mean, you get a bunch of guys going out in the middle of the jungle drilling for oil, you know. It's, you know, their way of unwinding is quite a bit different than yours and mine, you know. Sure. So, Phil, I mean, you've been doing this over 20 years and the conversation this last year, I think because I changed the way I, I talk about it, it's filtered to, to the clients to which I serve. And again, being able to utilize, we're not here to sell. That's, that's not what I mean. We're here to have a conversation on where, where it fits, but that's, I, I find that my conversation with the, the clients has tried to overcome that bit of stigma that is that is attached to those type A's. Like it's become a staple now. It's uh, I mean, I, I'm around for the birth of EAPs back in the 80s. It was nothing when I, I sold my first group plan in 1984, 83. There was no such thing as EAP. So in the next couple of years, we started to see it and uh, I, I see a need. But I think that uh, my, the thought that comes to mind right now I listen to Rod, and I think COVID is going to turn everything upside down. And when we thought at one time that maybe EAP was sort of a maybe a, a, a perk, maybe a uh, now it's going to become a necessity because this has heightened the uh, uh, the, the issues that people have today. Uh, man, it's just uh, incredible what we're going to see after this. Saw an ad as we were driving around yesterday. We drove into North Burnaby and over to East Vancouver to do a dog park and get a cup of coffee. It, we're not supposed to do that because we're not supposed to cross uh, health regions and it's supposed to only oh, be- Oh, we'll have to close our ears then. Are we can hear it. Penny says, is this necessary travel? Well, it is for us, but whatever. We, we did that and I see a sign, uh, a, 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 bill, a billboard that says, uh, you have to plan to get ready to return to work. And how are you going to deal with that? So everybody's going to now go back to work. How are we going to deal with that? And I think a lot of business owners have their mind, their head in the sand. And I see the opportunity to have conversations now. Because uh, I, I always believe that in, insurance and financial advisors, all, all they need is a reason to have a conversation. I agree with you. But exactly. It is an opportunity. And I happened to have a conversation this morning with a client who has a younger demographic who told me that they never think about these things. What What's your perception on that from working in that demographic? I've added on probably 10 or 12 EAPs since COVID hit. Um, Good job, so Chris. It's, yeah, it's it has to be done. It's, uh, you know, you you... Every, there's a mentality I find with, in particular, some young startups where the founders are 24, 25, 26 year old males, and there's an invincibility, um, and they think they're they're like Teflon, everything's going to bounce off them, and that's not the case. And I've seen, God, I've had to, uh, cases where you know software developers at 21 have committed suicide. Um, so I've I've used the story many times that you can't, don't think that you're immune, don't think that your team's immune. 
that for this small amount, you need to invest in your staff, especially now. Um, and then when you go through the renewals and you see you know, the higher than expected uh, psychological claims, social worker claims, it kind of reinforces the idea that you know people need that support more so now than ever. So I've seen a big uptake in the EAPs. What they're looking for in general is um, a forward-thinking EAP provider. Um, because you know there is there is an expectation with the younger demographic that you know you can do everything online. You're not going to be sitting in a counselor's office. Even without COVID, they don't want to be sitting in a counselor's office. They want to do it 24/7 wherever they want. So um, it's a you really have to educate them on you know different ways that people can get counseling. Um, but it's it's been very very interesting to see the uptake. Yeah, and, and I, Chris, thanks for mentioning that. Larry, if I could quickly. So Chris is bang on and Bob too. So EAP really is a foundation of well-being now. So a benefits package should just, that's a, one of the foundational pieces. But on that, that sort of Gen Z and millennials, you're right. So we invested over $20 million on the site and the, and, and the mobile app. Believe it or not, we, in some cases where it's not emotionally driven, we can do a, an hour chat session using texting, using our app. With, with an individual because the millennials and the Zeds, they're, they're not comfortable with making phone calls a lot of the times or doing a sort of a one-to-one, -one, but they're good on chatting and texting. And you can chat and text with us through the night, like 24 hours a day. So some of those things you're talking about are really important. And the ability to go through a digital online journey at their own pace is key. And we've got the top nine presenting issues from the clinical team created online now as well. So it balances out the live with the tech. Great points for sure. And, and I, but I was going to say the one struggle that uh, um, I'm getting going back to what Rod was talking about before is the telehealth side, because, you know, right now in Canada, uh, excluding the provincial healthcare options, we have approximately 32 different telehealth platforms available to Canadians, some paid, some free. Um, and it, it's, it's interesting to see the different perspectives, you know, from sun and, Candle Life and some others bundling them, and some of these platforms kind of going quasi from uh, just being strictly telehealth into uh, like quasi EAP. Um, it's very interesting to see. So some employers are like, "Yep, we've got to get a great option, whether it be a Maple or a Dialog or some of the other ones that are available, or whether they're looking at the free options like Tia Health and some other ones." So um, there's no consensus on, from what I've seen, what's right or wrong, whether you go for the paid or the free option but it is something that's on everyone's radar. Say just to follow up on that, Chris, when I'm talking to clients about, you know, adding telemedicine and they'll say, well, why, why add something paid when it's free by provinces and there's call-in numbers. And I often use the analogy of free Spotify versus paid Spotify. Sure, there's free Spotify, but there's all these ads and there's a lot of junk information and you never really get what you want. You can only switch a few songs in an hour. And, you know, we've got people that pay, such as myself, the $12.99 a month or whatever it is for paid Spotify, which is actually more expensive than paid telemedicine. So if I'm willing to spend the money on you know, good music streaming services, of course, you're going to invest that into your health. And so that's one of my favorite analogies about paid telemedicine. And that's a perfect analogy. I like that. I'm going to steal it. All right. So consider it gone. And I think Rod makes a great point about saying access to care and immediacy and not having to wait. I, I just, I, I can't think anything more that when I need it to have a chit chat, when I'm in the moment, I need to have that chit chat because us type A personalities, we have no time for, for delays. It's, it's so true. And you hear so much of that, Lori, absolutely, the delays. It's the same thing in our family, too. We all got checkups. You know, I, 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 so I moved from Calgary to, to BC. It took a two years for us to get a doctor. And then so we all got checkups. And it took months for them to just get back to us to say everything was OK. And so, you know, it, again, that's anxiety. So, so guys, you, you brought up a couple of key points. I know we're almost out of time, but I want to share with you some, some areas that may help when you're looking at this morass of different options. So specifically with the free services, and Melissa, I love your analogy. You're exactly right. And something I like to say, too, is sometimes the most expensive thing you can get is free because it's wasting time. It's not, it's not supporting people the way you need it to, and it creates a lot of other problems. So here's, here's a couple of points. A lot of the telemedicines that there are doctor led. Our program is not doctor led for, for a very specific reason. Telemedicine is supplemental. When someone uses a, a doctor through telemedicine, it actually affects their relationship with their own doctor. 
there's an impact of revenue. So your own family doctor quite often is not thrilled with that relationship that you've done, even if it's just for a single session. Nurse practitioners do not impact the revenue your family doctor gets. And about 80% of Canadians have a family doctor. So we don't want to impact that. Again, this is supplemental. So that's one key thing. The second thing is the continuity of care. So you can see our nurse practitioner, the same one, multiple times. So if you've got a chronic issue, that's key. If you're using a lot of the telemed services out there that are doctor-led, they're picking all kinds of doctors from all over the place to jump on for 10 minutes or five minutes. Ours will be longer. Nurses are more empathetic. It's just a fact. They'll spend more time. And again, they're not looking for that revenue uh, sort of kickback from the provincial health authority. So it's a different relationship. We're paying them for that service and they'll spend more time with them. The next thing is reporting. Those free services do not give the employer any reporting data. We will give advanced reports on trends, why they're calling in, what the issues are. Still confidential, but the reporting data allows you to make better decisions. The last thing I'll leave you is we also have what's called benefits navigation. So we can have a file when the employee calls in and uses telemedicine that we can say to them, you know, M Melanie, you've got these services in your group package that also can help you. So there's benefits navigation that we can add into the mix as well as part of that solution model. So those, those are a couple of quick points on the differences in what we have in the hundred, hundred, the you know the hundreds of other options that are out there right now in Canada. So I think what you're what you're saying is, is that we need to have another conversation about this. That's what I <laughs> that's what I think. I think there's enough information here that we need to touch base. And and you know I'll I'll call on you again, Rod, to bring you in and have another conversation. Anytime. Thank everybody for coming in and sharing. I always like to have a plug for benefits by design. You guys rock, and I do hope that you'll come back next week. Thanks again for coming in today. You've totally made my day as always.